This is going to be the most scientific breakdown of the egg diet that you're going to find on the internet. I'm going to give you an unbiased review and I'm going to look at different things. I'm not just going to look at the cholesterol side of things. I want to look at omega profiles. I want to look at sulfur. I want to look at glutathione. I want to talk about the egg diet in a different light and help you understand truly what it is. And this is completely unbiased. I don't do the egg diet. Anyhow, if you don't follow me already, my name is Thomas DeLauer and go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to get three to five awesome nutrition and workout coaching videos per week. And if you are already a follower, make sure you turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. All right, so first off, what the heck is the egg diet? I'll give you my first off honest impression of the egg diet. It's something that's been sort of manufactured to piggyback off of the keto diet. People are seeing that the keto diet is successful and that it's getting popular, so people are starting to make different spin-offs with the same general underlying principles. But ultimately, the egg diet is more of a mono diet. It's where you really focus on eggs as your primary source of fuel, if not your only source of fuel. Some people eating upwards of two dozen eggs per day. It can be pretty darn aggressive. The whole idea here is that eggs supposedly have the abundant nutrient profile that you need to survive and the perfect ratio of fats to protein. Some of that I'm not gonna argue with, okay? If you have really truly good quality eggs, you can get a nice nutrient profile from them. And sure, the fat to protein ratio is quite nice and supports a general ketogenic lifestyle. But there's some other things that we really have to look at. First off, it's never good to get your food from just one source. What's gonna happen is your body's ultimately gonna to start to develop antibodies to it, and it's gonna happen very fast. As we start to consume something over and over and over again, our bodies do start to create antibodies to it. It does start to create a reaction, raising specific IgE and IgG responses within the body. These IgG responses make it so that your body signals an immune attack whenever you're eating this food in the future. This is the same kind of thing that happens with gluten intolerance. For example, back in the 1950s, we didn't have much of an issue with gluten, believe it or not. Nowadays, we have an issue with gluten. And it's not so much that gluten has changed a whole lot, it's more so that we have overconsumed wheat to the point where we're developing antibodies to it. Well, this happens at a smaller scale, very aggressively and very fast if you consume the same food, especially only that food. But let's talk about something different. I wanna talk more so about the omega profile. Omega-3s versus omega-6s. Eggs are generally about 1% omega-3 and over 14% omega-6. Now, you might hear the word omega and automatically think that it's a good thing, but here's the thing. Omega-6s are not good in high amounts, not good at all. In fact, very, very detrimental. So much so that there are multiple studies that link omega-6s with inflammation and terrible conditions within the body. So what's the problem? Why can't we just modulate that omega-6 with something else? Well, here's the thing we need to be in equal balance of omega-3 and omega-6s. And if we're consistently consuming a food that is higher in omega-6s than omega-3s, it's skewing that balance in our body. So what exactly happens with omega-6s then? Omega-6s are what are called a pro-inflammatory fat. It is literally their job to signal inflammation at specific periods of time. Omega-6s help support the immune system. So they literally are provoking inflammation. They're also provoking higher blood pressure and provoking blood clotting. They're literally a security measure and our body should only have enough omega-6s to ultimately support these emergencies, not provoke inflammation all the time. So if we have high levels of omega-6s, we have high levels of inflammation occurring constantly. And if you've ever watched my videos on inflammation, you know that this inflammation is what is very, very detrimental to your fat loss goals and to your overall health goals. It's slowing a lot of things down. But what does it have to do with the omega-3s? Well, here's the cool thing, kind of cool, depending on what situation you're in. Omega-3s and omega-6s compete for the same enzyme in the body. What do I mean by that? Well, this enzyme converts omega-6s into a usable inflammation-provoking form, and the same enzyme converts omega-3s into a usable form. How come there's only one enzyme? The world may never know. Maybe we just haven't evolved to that point yet. But the fact of the matter is that in a perfect world, we'd have enough enzymes to support omega-3 and omega-6. But right here, right now, they compete for the same enzyme, which means that if you have more omega-6 in the body, that enzyme is gonna say, hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Omega-3, I only have room for the busy crowd over here. I'll have to deal with you later. So it's gonna go over to the omega-6s. So that means that that ratio is gonna get worse and worse and worse of what's in your body because that enzyme is gonna to continue to favor omega-6s. 
So when we consume a food that is super high in omega-6 and super low in omega-3s, we're putting ourselves in a very terrible situation where we can never convert alpha linoleic acid into eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid, the very powerful omega-3s. So that is my biggest, biggest issue with the egg diet. You're putting yourself in a terrible omega imbalance, which is gonna leave you feeling very cruddy and potentially even cause some long-term damage. All right, now let's circle over to the cholesterol world. Okay, I'm gonna play devil's advocate here on the egg diet because I have a little bit of a different stance when it comes to cholesterol. I've seen a lot of people talk about how the egg diet's gonna end up raising everyone's cholesterol as well as the keto diet gonna raise everybody's cholesterol. Guys, we have to understand something. Our bodies on a given day usually have between 1,500 and 2,000 milligrams of cholesterol in them, period. That's just the way it goes. About 25% of that is coming from our diet. 75% is already manufactured in our body. Cholesterol is not all coming from the diet. The vast majority, three-fourths of it, is just being synthesized and processed and manufactured by our own bodies. The bulk of what we consume in the way of dietary cholesterol ends up getting emulsified, broken down by bile salts, and excreted through the body. We're not even absorbing most of it. But here's the other crazy thing, is that our bodies use a very tightly regulated system to make sure that we don't ever have too much cholesterol. So if we consume more dietary cholesterol, our body's going to create less of its own manufactured kind to make sure that we're in balance. And if our dietary intake of cholesterol is too low, then surprise, our body manufactures more to make sure we're always at that 1,500 to 2,000 milligram range. Okay? The reason that people end up with high cholesterol ends up with other genetic mutations and other issues outside of the diet. Now, I could get totally flamed for saying this, but there's quite a few studies to back it up. In fact, there was one study that was a meta-analysis. That means a big study that took a look at multiple studies that was published in the Journal of Obesity Reviews. So let's talk about this one. This meta-study took a look at 17 clinical trials with over 1,100 patients. 17 major clinical trials, 1,100 patients. Okay, and what they did is they took a look at these patients, they put them on a high-fat, low-carb diet. And what they found is at the end of a very long time, they had no change in their LDL cholesterol and no change in their HDL cholesterol, proving that dietary cholesterol doesn't make a big impact on our overall cholesterol levels, good or bad. So with that being said, I think we can just forget the fact that the egg diet is going to affect your cholesterol. I don't think it's going to do that. The way that it could affect your cholesterol or it could affect atherosclerosis is because of the omega-6s, it's going to jack up that inflammation and that inflammation is going to cause inflammation in the arterial walls, which will therefore allow LDL to stick in the wall more. So there, it could cause an arterial plaque issue, but it's not from the cholesterol itself. All right, so now let's talk about another component of these wonderful white beauties that people don't really talk about very often, and that is sulfur, okay? Have you ever noticed if you eat a lot of eggs that you end up with gas that smells like, well, rotten eggs? Guess what? That's sulfur. If you've ever been to Yellowstone National Park, you've ever been to any kind of geyser, you smell that sulfur, that's what's going on. Same thing. It's a mineral, and it's the third most abundant mineral in our body in the first place, and it's required for a ton of different things. But... If you end up finding that when you go on the egg diet or you consume copious amounts of eggs that you end up having a lot of a rotten egg smelling gas problem, you are probably consuming too much sulfur, okay? That's a good sign that you don't have enough cysteine to ultimately bind with it and therefore you don't need that much. So you can lay off the cruciferous veggies, you can lay off the eggs a little bit. So the egg diet will tell you that. If you're deficient in sulfur, the egg diet might be perfect for you. So if you're not getting the gas or anything like that, then maybe it's gonna work out for you. You see, we have this thing in our body called glutathione, and glutathione is produced to ultimately nullify any of the toxins in our body. But part of the way that glutathione works is it binds with actual sulfur, and it creates something called glutathione reductase. Okay, it's the reduced form of glutathione. When that glutathione goes throughout the body, it reacts with poisons, and it gives away one of its electrons. What happens then is the old glutathions that have given away their electrons actually have to combine with each other again. And when they combine with each other, the two sulfur molecules that are attached to the glutathione bind to each other. So I know that's advanced, but all I'm trying to get across is that sulfur is a key route in detoxifying your body, even though when you have sulfur gas, it smells like you're lethally toxic. Okay, that was just kind of a joke. But anyway, here's my breakdown of the egg diet. Okay, good, bad, ugly, take whatever you want. The fact is, eggs do have a nice abundant profile of minerals and vitamins, 
but most of them are so processed and most of them are so low quality that you're never gonna get much benefit out of it in the first place. And your inflammatory signals are gonna be so jacked up and your overall immune system is gonna be so fired up from the antibodies, you're probably not gonna get the benefit anyway. That's just my take. As always, if you have ideas for future videos, just put them in the comment section below or if you want me to review any kind of diet or any kind of fad, I'm happy to throw the science at you. I'll see you in the next video.